seven in the national polls wearing the home black shirts. It's a college football team that's played in a lot of big games over the last decade, but few bigger than today's matchup against number three, Texas A. Division 1A head coach in the country. On Wednesday last, the first snowfall of the coming autumn fell up to 12 inches in some areas of Colorado. The president and vice president's planes delayed three and a half hours leaving Denver. The postcard brought lots of damage, millions of dollars, as a half million trees were lost to damage in the greater Denver area alone. Today, the temperature's in the high 60s, and it's a great day for a game of college football. Hello again, I'm Keith Jackson, along with Bob Greasy. Lynn Swan is on the field. Bob, this matchup today between the Buffaloes and the Yaggies offers some really wonderful tactical matchups. Well, it does, Keith, and I'm looking forward to seeing two of the best uh, college offensive players around, Leland McElroy, the running back for the Aggies. He leads the team in rushing, leads them in pass receiving, and leads the nation in kickoff returns and also in all-purpose yardage, over 320 yards. Look... <laughs> We're ready to play football in Boulder, Colorado. With the Texas A&M Aggies will kick off as soon as they can get the ball to stay on the tee. Lyndon Henry, number 39, and Herschel Troutman, number five, waiting for the black-shirted Buffaloes. And the weather is just about right. The first time these two teams have ever played each other, and ironically, they will start Big 12 conference play against each other next year at College Station. Is a tailback and a very dangerous man with the ball in his hands. Billiard's kick is high and long and headed for the corner, and it doesn't get to the corner. It goes out of bounds at the two yard line, and that should give the Buffaloes the ball up on the 35. And as they come up, look for some fireworks early from Rick Neuheisel's Buffaloes. I mean, they are jacked up. They all know this is a big ball game. And the man who pulls the trigger for them is Coy Detmer. He is a Texan himself. He leads the nation in passing efficiency, eight touchdowns and only one interception. Yes, he is the younger brother of Ty Detmer, who won the Heisman Trophy over at BYU. They're having the huddle on the sidelines now. The Colorado band is behind the Colorado bench. And we expect that the Buffaloes will come out and run a no-huddle series in the early going of this ball game. Here comes the first snap. AM doing some late substitution to try to match up with the three wide receiver set that Colorado starts with. Ryan Stoltenberg anchors for the Colorado offensive front. The pass is thrown by Detmer and caught by Bill Savoy, a sophomore out of Washington, D.C. He's 6'3, 200. He is a big target, and he, like all the other wideouts, a burner. So here come the Buffaloes now, working out of a no-huddle with Lepsis and Tennyson McCarty in the field now as they go to a double tight end alignment, which is a more conventional set here at Colorado. Has been at least under the regime of Bill McCartney. Rochelle Trotman, they can't hold him on the first try, but he will wiggle around and pick up maybe a yard, maybe two, but at least he didn't lose any. The Chili's starting lineup. Colorado backs and receivers, Ray Carruth at 5'11", 190 is the real flyer of this group of wideouts. I mean, he just can disappear. He's a blur. So they've got some great speed at those wide positions. Well, they don't give you much. Let's call it first, uh, second down and 10. Here's the handoff. It goes uh, to Herschel Trotman, and Trotman will get it to midfield. Actually, he picked up the first down, so we should have called that a first and ten and give him a carry of about three and a half yards. The offensive front is anchored by Brian Stoltenberg, 280 pounds. The middle here is where the muscle is. Heath Irwin and Chris Nioli. Those three are first class. Top notch. Top notch. The ball is just over midfield, where it is second down and six. Roy Detmer rolls it out, and he throws to the sideline, but the pass is good to James Kidd. There's a penalty flag on the field. Uh, while they're marking 
walking off the penalty. Let's check in with John Saunders. Thanks a lot, Keith. As you know, Miami had only ever lost one game in Big East history, but here Ryan Clement in for Ryan Collins, who hurt his shoulder. Can't find you, Teal Green, and Virginia Tech gets the win, 13-7. to Keith, back to you. The penalty is against Colorado. The ball comes back to the Buffalo side of the field. It's a holding call, and it's a 14-yard penalty. The big problem today for the Texas A&M Aggies on defense will be try to match up. Yeah, exactly right, Keith. And they're doing a lot of it. A lot of substituting right now. They show blitz. They don't do it. And pass ball behind the line of scrimmage on the swing from Trumpet. And the Aggies are all over it and take him down at the 30-yard line. The defense for A&M will line up this way. Brandon Mitchell is the ringleader of this group, number 96, a 275-pounder, and he was looking Troutman right in the eye on that play. And the strength of this defense is their speed. Mitchell is their best player, but they have speed, and their linebackers, Brown, Wynn, and Walker, can all run under 4-7. Here's where the story may be told before the day is done. Ray Mickens, who's also returning punts for A&M, he and Donovan Greer are yes. really speedsters on the corner. A&M has always played a lot of man-to-man -man on their corners against wide receivers. It is third down and 25 as Detmer gets pressure. Has a lot of open field in front of him, gets his pass away. The pass is dropped by Savoy. He kind of ran into the traffic, and the ball was probably tipped as it came to him. So the Colorado Buffalo with a 14-yard penalty now will have to punt. Yeah, Detmer almost makes a big play out of this. He threw it back across the field, and he didn't see Greer, 27, coming from the opposite side. Andy Mitchell is the punter. They've been alternating punters, but it's going to be Mitchell, I'm told, today. And the deep man is the cornerback, Ray Mickens, number 24 for the Aggies. There is no pressure. It's a low kick. He's going to let it hit the ground, and now he takes it. He's got a little room, but the Buffaloes run him down at the 31-yard line. 41-yard punt and a five-yard return and a penalty play. The officials, a big eight crew. The referee is Tom Allers. We have delay a game on the return. Five yards, first down. Now we'll see A&M with the football for the first time. We'll go back and take a look at that last punt. Ray Mickens right here says it's a short kick. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. The official thought he was signaling for a fair catch. The penalty for signaling for a fair catch and then running is delay of game. But that was a poor call because he was just signaling, get out of the way. It didn't even resemble a yeah. fair catch. Okay. Well, anyway, the ball is put back on the 23-yard line where it's Ruben Michael lined up behind Corey Pulley. And the first offensive snap for the Aggies with a double wide putting a man in motion. And pulling hands to guess who? McElroy, who is taken down after about a two-yard pickup. Corey Pulley, 6'3", 205 senior from Deer Park, Texas. He is the nation's winningest active quarterback. 26-3-1 and one at R.C. Slocum. His coach describes him as a bit like Jay Parker. The yeah. young and uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Colorado starting with a five-man defensive line. And is moving all along the front. A&M trying to snap the ball and Pulling trying to jump across and get Colorado in the neutral zone. So let's see what they decide after they sort it out. It's offside against Colorado. And so the Buffaloes will give up five yards here. That's the second penalty on them in the ball game. There are your officials, the group. There's a the big eight group headed by Tom Ollers. The gate, of course, disappears next year and becomes the Big 12. As four schools out of the Southwest Conference join with the old Big 8 alignment. 
and it'll be the two Oklahoma schools and the four schools out of Texas will make up one of the divisions. Here's the man who has been the big story, Leland McElroy. And the Buffaloes are going to be all over him all day long. Alan Bulbon, a junior whose home is in Dallas, was the first man to make the hit on him, number 23. Okay, let's go back to the previous play. Watch this. Watch the receiver's going to come across, and watch what he does to help pull off the line, the defensive line. Back He's with no hurdle. Yeah. They try to catch Colorado Lincoln. They go for the first down. It's up near the 32, 33-yard line. Let's see about the spot. So Texas A&M trying to feed Colorado a little of their own medicine. Uh-huh. The Chili's uh, backs and receivers, the starting lineup for A&M. McElroy, we've talked about him already, and uh, he is considered one of the leading candidates for postseason honors, the Heisman in particular. Detron Smith gets the ball once in a while, but he's primarily a blocker. Uh, let's see about the first down. Short. And sitting up uh, just short of the 33-yard line, I would be startled if Marcy's local yep. decided to go for yep. it here. Yep. You're on the road, you put it away, you play defense. So both defenses uh, winning early against the uh, really uh, powerful offenses. The punter is Sean Terry. Averaging right at 46 yards per punt on seven punts this season. He's got a heck of a leg. The man waiting for it is Steve Roska for Colorado. He is a safety. And I mean, he is a good one tough guy but he can keep the football in his possession when he gets his hands on it but that's a rocket great kick and that's gone forever today that's <laughs> downtown and then some it'll come to the 20-yard line where it'll be first down for the Colorado Buffaloes that goes in a 68-yard punt to you by Chevrolet the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day genuine Chevrolet State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The document company, Xerox. And Red Wolf Lager, really red, really smooth. Follow your instincts. Elevation at Folsom Field, 5,334 feet. More than a mile high. From the 20-yard line, here come the Buffaloes in their second possession. Coy Detmer back to throw it, takes all day, throws high, missed his man. He had James Kidd available and simply threw it over his head. The game stories for Colorado, their offense, they have the number four offense going against the number four defense in the nation. We'll see who wins that battle. And the defense hold McElroy to under 225 total yards today. And that seems uh, like you can hold anybody under 225, but that's receiving, rushing, and return yardage. He is an impact player. The Buffaloes have a timeout here, so Coy Detmer is wandering over to have a visit with the head coach, uh, Rick Neuheisel. Rick wanted to know why he called timeout. Jack Swaggart, offensive lineman, 50, 51, and 52. He was a member of the Apollo 13 crew, an unsuccessful mission to the moon that has been so dramatized of late. One of 15 CU graduates to fly on a NASA mission, and unfortunately, we lost Jack at the age of 52 in 1983. 20-yard line now, second down and 10 for Colorado as they try to get themselves squared away. The Aggies show blitz, and they're coming in. The ball is stripped. Colorado can't cover it. It's in the end zone. On the left side, both teams defensively doing some things they have not shown in the past. Mitchell, 23, knocks it loose. That's Keith. Kemper tries to pick it up. He should just fall on it. Nice. That's the win, number nine. Still loose. And finally, Maxwell falls on it. 
Brandon Mitchell looked like he could have wrapped it. <laughs> he wouldn't put Wigley. And he missed the chance for the TD. The kick is good. Kyle Bryant with the extra point. And the Aggies go to the lead 7 to nothing. There's 23 being blocked there at the uh, tight at the tackle. Smith has a nice job of knocking the ball loose. Now the mistake here for Colorado, just fall on it. At the, not only 65 and the quarterback, Denver. Maxwell thinks he's just going to celebrate. He's a wait a minute. I got a touchdown here. <laughs> Keith Mitchell is 6'3", 223, playing at that defensive end position. That's great quick. And he just simply ran around that tackle. That tackle won't handle it. Yeah, well, he's not that big, Keith. He's get it fixed eventually. The ball is hammered down to the one, fumbled there by Trotman. Finally, he's got a little running room up across the 20. Holds his way to the 30-yard line. Texas A&M flying all over the place defensively right now as the defense yeah. gets the touchdown. And boy, does that jack up a Oh, and, and Colorado offensively and the whole team is a little shook up right now. Troutman fumbles the uh, kickoff return a uh, little bit. Uh, uh, there's a little indecision. Now the offense has to go right back out with the memory of they just fumbled the ball and lost it for a touchdown. So Denver needs some positive plays. They stripped the first 15 plays offensively for Colorado, so they're still going through their strip. That last play that they ran where the ball was uh, not loose was a very slow developing thing. I guess aren't going to give you time to mess with that kind of stuff. This is Herschel Trotman running over the right side, getting a little daylight behind Nioli and Stoltenberg, and there's a flat. The Buffaloes have had two penalties already. A&M both side, here's Lynn Clark. Okay, it's the reason why Rick New has a run and no other offense was to get the idea to think about that number up there. That's the altitude here. He's been thinking about that since the preseason. He wanted to test them physically. And have them psychologically think about the thin air here. Well, R.T. Slocum said the temperatures in Texas have been over 100 degrees every day of practice. He will substitute liberally for his guys to make sure that oxygen debt does not become a problem. He will give them a lot of rest. Keep first down and five. After the five-yard penalty on the offside, the Denver back had to go with it down the middle. That kid wide open. And kid trying to shake a tackler. Couldn't do it. Saving the touchdown is Donovan Greer, but it's a big play for the Buffaloes. They're going to be blitzing on the outside. But watch the matchup up here. The receiver one-on-one. -on -one. When you blitz, there's nobody left in the secondary to help you out. Detmer read it nicely, had time to throw it, and this is the thing that you get offensively when a team blitzes. You get a lot of big play opportunities. Good teams answer scorers. Colorado trying to do just that. Ball is handed to Trapman going around the corner. He's caught for the nap of the neck by Dot Win. He is a Vietnamese linebacker out of Rockport, Texas, 6'1", 213. Not so big, but boy, he can run. Oh, he can run is right. And uh, he was a little banged up earlier in the week. And uh, the defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, said, uh, you know, if you can't play now, we're going to put in uh, Trent Driver. He said, no, no, no. He says, I get ready for Colorado. I get ready. In his own little, uh, uh, little slang, he says he was going to be ready. Second down and seven. Seven, so he's hard to find. And he's got a first down for the Buffaloes. Well, from behind the defense, it's Ty Stoltenberg, 64, center who has snapped the ball and then pulls around. Colorado uses a lot of uh, pulling by their center. Not too many centers can do that, but Brian Stoltenberg is one of the best in the country. Ball just short of the A&M 17-yard line. First down for Colorado. Depper's pass to the corner. Man's over there, but he cannot read it in. Bill Savoy, covered by Donovan Greer. Well, Greer's made two big plays defensively for Texas A&M. Well, it looked like pass interference. In college, you can face guard. You can, you can put both hands up. Now he's got both hands up. Does he touch him before the ball gets there? I don't know. 
Here's another look at it. They were blitzing, so single coverage. Threw it to the outside. Uh, it looks to me like he may have hit him a little bit before the ball got there. If Savoy turns the other way, though, he gets it. This is Trotman shaking another tackler and running inside the 15 down to the 14. So they'll be looking at third and long. He got away from Edward Jesper. You got to wrap up, Trotman. You're not going to uh, arm tackle him. Yep, it's right. Just as you're not going to arm tackle that fellow number 34 on the other side either. Back They've got a committee of tailbacks uh, succeeding Rashan Salam, who's now with the Chicago Bears. Marlon Barnes will be in shortly. Then here comes Lyndon Henry. They all built about the same way. Oh. Here they come. Pass to the sidelines, and it is complete, but out of bounds in a hurry is Ray Carruth. And they will be looking at fourth down, and the kicking team will be on the field. Bill Bennett, the defensive coordinator for the Aggies, uh, putzing again. Colorado and uh, Detmer reading it, throwing to the hot receiver, but still short of the first down, forces a field goal try. Neil Voskaritian is on for a field goal try. The ball will be put down at the 18-yard line. It'll be a 28-yarder. He's three for three on the season. All three of those have been inside the 30, so he's there again. The holder is Steve Roska. Some up five and Monday night on ABC, Jeff Fay, he stars as the marshal with a special guest, Robert Mitchum, then Steve Young in the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Check your local listings for the time in your area. And the penalty makes it a first down and 15 for Texas A&M. Thrown quickly and thrown hard. And this is what Colorado defensively wants to do. A.J. Kristoff, the co defensive coordinator, wants to force Poli to, to, to beat him. He does not want to let McElroy beat him by running the football. Force Poli to throw it and throw it on first down. Here's A.J. Calling Captain Blitz. Pulling back to throw it. Beats on. Gets it away. And it is incomplete. It was intended downfield for Chris Sanders. But he didn't really have a chance. Here's Lynn Swan. Chief, just to follow up what Bob said, Pulling is going to have the weight on this game on the shoulder because there are going to be so many people trying to stop McElroy. What he has to do is to be a 60% or better passer in this ball game. And it doesn't matter whether the receivers are in good position to, uh, to make the catch. They've got to make the catch. It doesn't matter whether he's going deep on first or second down or whether it's third and eight. He's got to be successful so the defense will open up to give McElroy a lot more room. Keith? 20 yard line, third down and 15. Shotgun for the Aggies as Pulley comes up to the line trying to change the play and the crowd trying to rip it. Blitz is coming and they burn the clock. It's tough to check off when you're in the shotgun keep because the offensive lineman cannot hear you. That's what he was up there yelling at. He was yelling at his offensive line. So Captain Blitz got the job done in a way, in a sense. 
He changed his defensive delay alignment. On the offense, the delay of game preceded the false start. Therefore, five yards and repeat third down. It'll be third and 20. RC is saying, look at here now. Yeah. You've been yeah. here in hostile crowds yes. before. And he knows that the strength of this team is not the offense. They only returned three starters from last year. McElroy was not a starter. He is definitely one of the top players in the country, but without him, they're just an average offense. Crowd making as much noise as they can. They hand the ball off. There's nothing doing. Greg Jones just ate up the play, number 59, and the Buffaloes now are jumping up and down as they have backed a and up and held them deep in their own territory. Yeah. The defense is dominating this game in the first quarter on both sides. So into the end zone goes Sean Terry. His first shot today was a 68-yarder. Bullig was limping when he left the field. This is not going to be 68 yards. Rodzka has a little bit of room. But can't do much with it. He's trying to wait for some help to come down the field. But number five for Texas A&M got him quickly. It was Toya Jones, one of the defensive backs. And there's another penalty flag down on uh, the field. They're talking about it at the 41-yard line of Texas A&M. And it's an illegal block by Colorado. Without that penalty, Colorado would have had pretty good field position. Now, both coaches have had some, some, uh, some things in mind here in the first quarter. It's been frantic. Just frantic, frantic, frantic. <laughs> but maybe they'll settle down into well, something. It's been, kind it's of been hectic routine. because the defenses have been disruptive. Yep. It's, it's not been an offensive game. The Buffaloes have tried to substitute three wide receivers and whatever. They have found out that the Aggies are substituting right with them. Whenever they go to three wide receivers on offense, they go to five and six defensive backs on defense. So there is no gain in the substitution. The Aggies are right there with them. Sooner or later, they're going to have to hunker down and play football. Yes, they did. And now they are. They got two tight ends and two wides. It looked like they may be trying to run the football. Trotman up the middle. He's got four. People stepping into the middle are Keith Mitchell and Larry Walker. Larry Walker's a very busy fellow. Number 32. Again, not all that big, but he sits in the middle of that linebacking core. And He's got speed, though, Keith. Yes, he can He's really a, run. They say he runs. A, he ran a 4-3-9. He's a linebacker. So he ran a 4-3-9 in the spring. Rothman again running inside the tackles couple of yards and uh, the ball is now at the 45 of Colorado here 20. Well Keith you saw Pollock limping off the field the trainers are telling me there's nothing wrong with him he may have had his foot stepped on by one of those big boys down in the trenches but he is fine and we'll be back in the ball game. All right Caruth comes in at the wide out now for Colorado he was out for the previous play Savoy is back Davis is out. Ruth will be down there. He is number 21. He's down at the bottom of your picture, and uh, the roll is this way. And here's a little flip outside by Corey Detmer for a first down. Pretty to death, but once in a while he'll come up with that kind of a play. And Rick Neuheisel has been threatening to take the option out of the offense unless he starts getting rid of the ball. Well, he got rid of it that time, and one of the things with, with Detmer is he gets too pumped up. He gets too fired up. You may have seen some clips in, all, in the highlights where he goes and jumps over people his own, just barely gets rid of the ball to turn out a good play. They keep the ball now at midfield. Drops it, picks it up, rolling around, trying to get a hold of it. And I think Detmer has finally covered it. The thing was alive, and the beanbag went down, and uh, it'll be a loss of about three yards on the play. Tonight on ABC, brand new episodes of the Jeff Foxworthy Show and maybe this time starring Marie Osmond and Betty White. Then the premiere of Saturday Night at the Movies, coaches Shelley Fabre and Valerie Harper starring in the Great Mom Swap. All tonight on ABC. Put the ball on the 47-yard line now, Colorado, and it'll be second down and 13. Marlon Barnes is in the ball game for the first time at tailback. Detmer's going to throw. Let's it fly. He's got Savoy, and 
And Savoy's going to get a flag. That's an appearance. Better call it. Ray Mickens fouled him. 15 yards in the first down. Better than giving up a touchdown. Well, yeah, but, you know, the key matchup here are the wide receivers against the cornerbacks. And here is Mickens on Savoy. There you go. That's a, that's a foul right there. He's already passed him, and he hit him. He's all over it. Oh, that's going to be a battle. <laughs> that's going to be a battle. <laughs> hey, come on, come on. He's refereeing too. That's going to be a battle all day long. The two corners, Mickens and Greer, against the uh, wide receivers, Savoy and Carruth. Both teams now total eight penalties in the ball game. 15-yard penalty puts it inside the 38 of Texas A&M. Here they come. And they caught him. Marlon Barnes running it on the blitz, and he ran right past the blitz and picked up about five, six yards. He was one step from breaking it. See, that's one of the things that, uh, that R.C. Slocum talked about with McElroy. If he gets Colorado, if you can get McElroy into the Colorado secondary five yeah. times, they figure he'd probably score four. That's right. Three. But we're almost finished. Uh, we got four minutes to go in the first quarter, and uh, McElroy's only been in for six plays. That's right. So Detmer to the sidelines and overthrew it. May have thrown it that way intentionally because James Kidd had Ray Mickens lurking right behind him, and that might have gone the other way. Right on, boss. He was covered. He was covered. He's four out of eight now for 42 yards. And I'll tell you what, when Ray Mickens gets it going the other way, really? yeah. you, you don't catch it. Mickens, Mickens has been a key factor in this game already. He's blocked the field goal attempt and covered it several. He's, a, he's not big, but he's got great speed. And he can play. He by himself again. Third down. Detmer's pass is just enough for the first down. Ray Carruth in front of Donovan Greer. And the man coverage. Carruth is the guy they want to get the ball to. Just enough for the first down. Well, if the strength in the secondary are the corners, Colorado's got some pretty dead gum good tight ends. So that means that middle is suspect for well, the defensive. Well, unless they put a wide receiver tight end, let's just the tight end is not caught in the ball. Detmer keeping it there. Going to turn it up for a couple of yards, and that's all. Now let's check in for news about Ohio State with John Saunders. Johnny Major has got that Pittsburgh yes. crowd clawing and stomping, yeah, yeah. doesn't he? They, they've, uh, he's done a nice job. And you knew he would. Oh, sure. Second down and eight. Three minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's a 7 nothing ball game. Texas A&M leading Colorado. Is it touchdown? Nope. I didn't go. Detmer's hurt. Is it not in the transmission truck? Is that where the problem is? Twisted his knee or his ankle. I think it's knee, bro.
left ankle when he, when he turned around. Transmission truck, uh, Drew. <coughs> Is it local? to Boulder, Colorado after a lot of transmission troubles here. Let's go back and show you what has happened. The ball will be belong to Texas A&M at the 20, but here's Coy Detmer dropping back to pass. He's going to complete the pass to James Kidd, but in the aftermath of the pass completion, Detmer is going to twist his knee and wind up on the sidelines, laying on the cart while the doctors examine him. Here's another look at it. He's going to hurt this knee when he twists around right, right here. Couldn't have kept running anyway. He had to throw a fall down, but it wasn't from a a hit. 
Now that set up uh, a try on first and goal for Colorado. Three times they ran wide and A&M just stuffed them. They finally settled for a 30-yard field goal by Voskicherman. At least they're on the scoreboard at 41 seconds to play in the first quarter. Uh, it's 7-3 to three ball game. And Troy Detmer now with a brace on his right leg is headed for the clubhouse. And boy, you hate to see that, Keith. Uh, he was having a fine season, leading the nation in passing. He was the leader of this team. He had waited for four years here at Colorado to have his chance to play. When Cordell Stewart graduated, Rick Neuheisel inserted him and says he is the real deal. He is something special. He leaves with six out of 10 and 66 yards and 41 seconds remaining in the first half. Colorado kicking off to A&M after a five yard penalty. Aggies want a shot at returning it. Jason Leslie, who transferred here from UCLA, good kicker, but he won't get this one quite to the end zone. And the Aggies mess it up. McElroy's kicked around. Colorado almost got it. It is covered by Texas A&M, but they almost booted it away. I, can you believe this? McElroy, can, he is the all-time kick return leader in college football, and the freshman, the true freshman, Parker, number eight, wants to take it back. Yeah, he hasn't quite turned 18 they, yet. They, they, want, they want to kick it away from McElroy, and there it is for McElroy to run back. He leads the nation. He has returned four kickoff returns for touchdowns in his career, and the true freshman won't let him catch it. Wow. They line up in the eye formation now. The ball is at their own nine-yard line, first and ten. Corey Pulley throws it. Pass is completed. Play is out of bounds, caught by Albert Connell. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost $5.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. That was the seventh play of the first quarter for Texas A&M. Colorado has had 27. The Aggies lead 7-3. to three. It was a defensive touchdown for the Aggies. It is first down out of the 21-yard line. Pulling with good time. Throws intercepted. It's off the hands of Connell. And it is Elton Davis down to the goal line. But they won't give him the touchdown. So the defenses are dominating. Well, the fake is to McElroy, but watch the linebacker. Right there on him. Pulling puts the ball where he needs to put it. The third interception of the year for Davis, and he almost gets it in. This is what they're trying to do. Colorado wanted to take away McElroy and force pulling and the receivers to beat him. Can they do it? Not so far. First and goal from the one. Marlon Barnes, the deep man. Barnes to the goal line. Barnes did not get in there. He did not get in. You've got the clock running with 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. And they're just going to let it run down, and the quarter will end. Seven to three, Texas A&M with the Buffaloes threatening on a pretty day in Flatiron country. The snow left over. The Yankees are on the move. The band is here. Hullabaloo, connect, connect, and the Buffaloes headed for a new era. That's what you get, though. This will be the fifth play of the game Colorado has had inside the 10-yard line of A&M. It's second down and goal, and this time they go with a quarterback, Hessler, and he following the center and the two guards, and it's touchdown, Buffalo. So they finally punch it in. But, and for all intents and purposes, the defenses have scored both touchdowns.
Offensive line, just take the ball. Hessler, the quarterback, and just sneak it. The backs coming up behind him to push the pile into the end zone. Neil Vaskicharin out of Rosgar's hole for the extra point. And he's got it. So at 14.55 to go in the first half, Colorado to the lead by a score of 10 to 7. It's been a fireworks show by the defense as we check in with Lynn Swan. Keith, when Coy Detmer came over to the sideline and worked on him, the trainer came over and told me that it's his ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, and that right leg, he does not think it's very good. They've taken him inside to do more work on him. Obviously, he was very, very upset. Rick Neuheisel came over. He talked to Rick. Rick went back to the sideline. He was talking with Coy. Coy, literally in tears, had to limp into the, into the locker room, but we'll find out exactly to what extent his knee is hurt, probably in the second half. Keith? So that's going to put a ton of pressure onto John Hessler, who has to step in now at quarterback. He is a sophomore out of Brighton, Colorado. Baseball player, Keith. Pretty yep. good one. Yep. Pitcher. It's on his shoulders. He has not played a lot this year. Jason Leslie, who's from Palacios, Texas, will kick off. And let's see now if they'll leave it alone down there and let Leland McElroy have a chance at returning it. Sir Parker, the number eight who collided with him and almost cost him that ball a while ago, is a true freshman from Los Angeles, Long High School, and he has not turned 18 yet. He just got himself all jacked up and got in the way. So here's Leslie, barefoot Jason. He can pump it like that beyond the field of play. So the Aggies will come up to the 20. And here's this offensive front for Texas A&M. Chris Rubin, James Brooks, Kobe Hackrat. He just gets hunkered down there in the middle of the line and just occupies the territory <laughs> and is pretty good. I'll tell you what, he takes up a lot of room. But notice the sizes one. there, Keith. Not nobody over 300 pounds, and that tells me they can move pretty well. Yep. McElroy, so far in the ball game, has four carries for one yard. Four carries for one yard, and we're into the second quarter. Albert Connell, who had that ball go off his hand for the interception, he is wide to the bottom of the picture. He's a junior college transfer. Bullock's pass is completed. Out of the backfield to McElroy, who is, no, it's Detron Smith, number 44, and he's thrown heartily into the crowd on the sideline. Kerry Hicks for Colorado is the anchor on that defensive front. He's a very good one. Number 94, big fellow. 6'6 six, six and 270. Linebackers are all good. Matt Russell is the tough guy there in the middle. And uh, the DBs, strength is up the middle here with the safety. Leo Mitty and Rosgo, whereas for AM, they're corners of their secondary strength. Here's McElroy. And he's taken down at about the 29 yard line, a yard short of the first down. Uh, for Texas A&M, the thing for them, they need balance attack. Obviously, in the first quarter, not much rushing, so Pulling has got to be able to throw and carry his weight. Defensively, the cornerback speed matching up against the wide receiver speed, and so far, it's been in A&M's favor. The big story of the ball game is Colorado leads 10 to 7 is they have lost their quarterback, Coy Detmer. They suspect it's an ACL, an injury to the right knee. They've got a tight end in motion. They give the ball to McElroy for the first down as he penetrates to about the 32-yard line. Here's a look at the first quarter stats and uh, take a look for Texas A&M. One yard rushing, passing yards 13, total yards of 14. A&M is ranked uh, seventh in the nation coming in in total offense. Time of possession, big in favor of Colorado. But it's the defenses that are dominating this ball game right now. Aggies get their first down. Now coming wide to the bottom of the picture is Chris Sanders. Having his first action, having been suspended by his coach. Bullock rolls it out, gets it away to Sanders. He's got it. He's a big target. He's uh, 6'4", 222. 
And he's a senior. NM is doing a lot of throwing on first down, Keith, and that's really what they have to do to get the defense off of McElroy's back. The gain is out to the 42, just beyond it, and it's good for the first down. One of the other ways they like to get the ball to Leland McElroy is a little screen pass. Just flare him out into the flat and hit him, hit him with the ball. Texas will beat Notre Dame by two today. This is McElroy. It's some of the magic that he can produce when he gets in a crowd. I don't know, what is it? We've got a lot of backs. That have that of Eddie George at Ohio State is one that jumps immediately. Warwick Dunn. Warwick Dunn. It can pick their way through traffic but, uh, so yeah. quickly. We haven't days. seen a lot of Leland today, but I've seen some tape on him, and uh, he is something special. He has got 4-3 speed. He can cut on a dime. He can catch the ball. He's elusive, and he's got great vision. That's him, it, I guess. Him, vision. Him, yeah, vision. We haven't seen it yet, but uh, it's there. <laughs> Pulling's pass is too high. Yeah. Intended for Danny McRae. 10 to 7, Colorado leading at 12.55 to play in the first half. It'll be third down and three. And Pulling had McRae open. He just didn't hit him. Notice that he's carrying the armband with the plays on it. What, what, uh, what happens now? They'll just signal a number into him. And he'll look down on that thing, see next to the number 18, for instance, there'll be a play much quicker and easier. Show blitz, back out. They're coming. They pick it up, the pass is away, and it's off the hands of Chris Sanders. He was the hot man on the blitz, and he was wide open. He had a rose garden to the end zone, and he didn't catch it. Well, you're right, Keith. Here he is lined up in the slot. The inside man's going to break to the outside. But watch as Sanders breaks to the inside. They cross. He catches this ball. He could split the defense right up the middle. Oh, sure. Because those safeties are sitting right up in there. Liam Eddy, 15, is up playing That's, almost a linebacker. Those are the plays that you have to make. Yep. They, they're taking McElroy out. So somebody else, pulling, and the receivers have to step up. So Roska will go back deep as Sean Terry comes in for his third punt of the ball game. And a fair catch is called by Roska. Back at the 10-yard line at 12.45 to go in the first half. Colorado with the ball, and they go to work with the new quarterback. Has this kid Hessler thrown a pass yet this year? Yeah. The swelling stays down. I have been told there is a chance he might actually come back out and play. Obviously, not wanting him to run the football. But the cautious, conservative route will be that he probably won't come back at all. It's definitely a torn ACL. Wow. That's a tough break. That really is. And, and note that he did that when nobody hit him. He did it on artificial turf as he was trying to twist to make, to make it work. So now here's young John Hessler, who's uh, going to have a different sound, is going to have a different cadence, is going to have a different uh, lot of things. And uh, the Buffaloes are really going to have to pay attention now. Let's see about this penalty. Dead ball, offside, on the defense. So the Aggies Third help him right there. First down. The Aggies help him out with an offside, trying to anticipate, obviously trying to get in the face of that young quarterback and cause him some trouble. Well, this is a tough situation uh, for High New Heisel. Hester's 9 of 15 this year, no interceptions and no touchdowns. It's Lyndon Henry, the 190-pound sophomore, who's also a Texan from Port Arthur, who's going to move the ball up for two or three yards. Yeah, more than that. He got about eight yards. Well, no, the, the five-yard penalty. That was a five-yard penalty. Yeah, That's right. Three. So it'll be second down and two, and he got three yards. And the offense for uh, New Heisel has turned conservative since he Hessler has been in the ball game. He's not thrown a pass since he's been in there. He's been in about eight or nine plays. Hessler rolls it out. Here's the pass dropped off underneath. The pass is caught by Tennessee McCarty, who is the better receiver of the tight ends. And that'll be good for a first down, obviously. That was well-executed play. 
And uh, that's the kind of a thing I think that you're going to have to see Hessler working well, with until he gets his feet wet. The easy things, the, the high percentage passes, uh, things that you have to move him around because A&M is not going to let uh, the quarterback sit back there for very long. Maybe move him outside the pocket or throw three-step passing. This is Henry trying to go parallel. You're not going to run parallel against Texas a and You're not going to run wide. I mean, yeah. just, you're just not going to do it. They were across the line of scrimmage in your backfield. Brandon Mitchell just ate that play up. I mean, if you're going to go east and west, you might as well quit now and go on to the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around, scrambling around here, actually, is what we're doing, trying to get uh, the information on uh, John Hessler. He, coming into this appearance now, he was 9 of 15. He has completed one, so he's now 10 of 16 with no interception so far on this season. He obviously hasn't played a whole lot. Here they come. They're all up there. Yep. Second down and 12. They're looking him right in the eye. Looks for his hot man. Let it go. Down the middle. Got him. That's a pretty good play by the kid. Phil Savoy reeled that in. I don't think, however, it's... Well, it may be. It may be a first down. That linesman standing over there, the way he's marked it, he's going to mark it at the 38-yard line, and that'll be enough. It's a nice play, though, Keith, by the young quarterback, Hessler. You know, when, when this happens, when a quarterback goes down, who has really, well, he's led the nation, Hepler has, and the second guy goes in, he's really not nervous. He doesn't have time to be nervous. No, he'll think he'll, tomorrow. He'll be nervous next week when he has to start. But right now, he's, he's completed, he's doing exactly what they wanted him to. Yep. First and ten for the Buffaloes. They lead ten to seven. And a good fake, good poise, long downfield. Caruth is down. The wide receiver speed versus the cornerback speed. AM goes one on one outside, and this time Caruth, the man they want to get it to, beats him, and Hessler gets it to him. Big time play right there. First and goal from the four with Miller and Henry in the backfield for Colorado. It ball is loose for a second. I thought it might have popped out of there. They're scrambling around in the bottom of the stack. The Aggies are arguing for it. Nobody with a striped shirt said anything. Henry was looking for it. And it's Colorado ball. And how do well, you really know? <laughs> yeah, how do you know? That's yeah. right. Somebody just out wrestled somebody at the bottom of the pile. There's a look from behind the offense. 39, Henry is going to get it. Well, again, that could be new quarterback, Bob. Well, know, no, he had the ball. The he, way. he put it in his belly button. And he had the ball and then went in there in that mass of humanity. And I don't know how any official could really decide, but I guess the man that came up with it, after all the infighting, his team is going to get it. The Ruth is a man in motion. Kessler keeps it, rolls it out, gets a block, he's in. He's in. Touchdown. who has suddenly emerged scores his second touchdown of the ball game play action fake pretty good defense Hessler just gets a block from McCarty two yard touchdown second of the game And Rick Neuheisel has his quarterback in his hands, and he is walking and talking. And the kick is up by Buskitcherin, and it is good. Ah, oh, fate. What a funny little thing you are. Toronto, uh, analysts to Lee Corso and Craig James, of course, and... They got the mountains over the shoulder and a big crowd behind them, and they're having a hoot. Coming to the big ball game, of course, 
of the uh, of the weekend. And while they are over here having a good time before, Chris is now in the crowd watching him as a good alum off to. All right, here's the coach, and here's your quarterback. The quarterback is suddenly thrust upon center stage. And as coach is trying to maybe keep him from realizing what he's doing. His confidence is at an all-time high right now. Yesterday. Just saying, calm down, That's right. take it easy. You're doing well. We're going to win. They lead 17 to 7. Now Jason Leslie will kick it off. And uh, Leland McElroy and Sir Parker wait for him. Leslie trying to knock it back into the end zone again, and he does that. He's got him eight yards deep, and he will not return it. And so once again, Jason Leslie does what he is supposed to do. Don't let McElroy bring it out. Next Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 Central, ABC's college football, doubleheader, regional coverage, Boston College, Michigan State. The rest of the games you see there. Check your local listings for the game in your area. And then Notre Dame and Ohio State and Columbus. First time in 60 years. Check all the local listings or call your cable operator if you have a little trouble finding what you want. done much. They haven't had many plays. Three punts and an interception and McElroy has not been a fact. He's got the ball right here. And they're all over him short of the line of scrimmage. A loss of two yards. Now here's John. The Colorado defense, the hundredth time this season when the opposition has gained uh, zero or minus yards in a quarter. And the way they're going, it's uh, going to be a half pretty soon. Nine minutes to play in the first half with Colorado leading Texas A&M 17-7. What's going on? Aggies have gained 42 yards so far in this half. Pulling back to throw. Loops it down the sidelines for McElroy. He's got it, and he is taken down at the 43-yard line. He fell down actually on the 45. The guy had it marked. Now he moves it up to the 45 and across. Well, take a look, Keith. This is one of the reasons why they cannot run the football with McElroy. There are eight guys there. This time he's going to take the ball and he's going to swing out. He's going to swing out of the backfield and he's going to throw it to it. Take it to him and then throw it to him. But eight guys up there to stop McElroy. That's why he's not running. So they're finding other ways to get him the ball. That's good thinking by Steve Ensinger, the offensive coordinator. Will Bond, number 23, is a linebacker. No way Allen's going to catch him. And they'll pick up about two yards on that play. Here's one of you again. Eight, number 59, Greg Jones, was off on the sideline a couple of plays ago. They were working on the shoulders. They say he's got a little pinched nerve in his left shoulder, so he's back in the ball game, but you may want to keep an eye on him. Kind of trying to watch uh, A&M to see if they're starting to huff and puff a little bit in this altitude thing that Jones is playing here when you're not used to it. McElroy is just hammered so the line of scrimmage. The loss of the call. Uh, Greg Jones is in, 20. I guarantee you he's in. He was like a fallen tree on that ball carry. So he must be all right. Second down, third down, and eight now. Ball is up to 47. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. One of the reasons they, one of the reasons they had good defense that time they had 12 players out here. <laughs> two guys two guys came on and only one guy went off. I'm saying that's not right. We got 12 players did they catch defensively. Him? Did they catch well, him? They're down there talking about it. Yeah, now they got him. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's good. 
There's AJ. He says, AJ, somebody, somebody's got to come off. But, but the Aggies had a, almost a hurry-up huddle and a hurry-up cadence that time. Didn't allow them uh, to get settled, and they snapped the ball. I wonder who caught him, though. Sometimes it's it's the, uh, the sideline yelling for the guy to get off the field, and that alerts the official. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Illegal participation. 12 men on the field for the defense. 15 yards to the previous spot. First down. That's a big, big foul there. Good work. It moves Texas A&M way down to the 37, 38-yard line, 36-yard line of Colorado. Talking with uh, A.J. Kristoff uh, yesterday, he said, we want to we wanna force Pollock and his receivers to beat us. We want to take away Leland McElroy. And for this for a quarter and a half, they've done an excellent job. On first down, it's McElroy looking for a crack. And he is taken down. The penalty flag is thrown. Lines went through it. personal foul on Colorado so there's a another 15 yard penalty that's 30 yards of penalties in yep. successive plays yep Monday night football here on ABC will be at the Silver Dome in Detroit the San Francisco 49ers going to the Lions Barry Sanders the Lions are winless they're 0 and 3 and it's dangerous country. Uh, well I, uh, I like Barry Sanders though and I like uh, Scott Mitchell I, I think he's a good quarterback and uh, I like Steve Young also. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to go winless on the season, though, are they? Oh, well. I mean, you know, Detroit, uh, look at what Minnesota scared the daylight out of the Cowboys last week. They are. Inside seven minutes now. And the Aggies getting those 30 yards of penalty. Give it to Michael Roy, and he's up the end zone. Going down the bounds at the five-yard line. First and goal. And the penalty flags are flying again. Actually going to be against uh, the Aggies, I think. Whoop. Yep. Well, yeah, we've got a succession of big penalties here, haven't we? Three fouls in a row. Yep. Rick Neuheisel. Spending uh, as much time as he could with his quarterback has now come back to the sidelines as his team is being threatened by Texas A&M. And R.C. Slocum, of course, are benefiting from the first two big penalties. Now has one thrown on him. The ball comes back out to the 22. It's a big drive for R.C. and his Aggies because their offense really has not done anything all day. The defense got the one score. And with the, uh, with the, uh, the defense from Colorado's two big penalties, helping you get down the field, you need to get some points on the board. It'll be thir first and 13 after that foul. Buffalo to the five-pass front. Corey Pulley throws it. He has a man available to him. The pass is caught by Connell down at the 11-yard line. And they finally get the whistles to stop the play. They've got to go to just about the eighth to get their first down. Yeah, all day long, Keith. Five-man defensive line, play action to McElroy, and those receivers are going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. It's closer to the 10, so it'll be second down and two. 17-7, Colorado. Coy that injured knee, out of action. Could be a long time. Could be a, an ACL injury, anterior cruciate ligament. T.J. Cunningham was going off the field. He's a cornerback that made that last tackle. That means the green, the green one is replacing. Roy got the first down to the 
close to the seven. McElroy is 5'11", but he weighs 202 pounds. And there can't be much fat on him. Not the way he works. They want to check the first down measurement. The change will come in. What does A&M do when they get inside the 20? Well, 15 times they've scored 12, and 11 of them have been touchdowns. So they, 80%, that's pretty good. Looks like they're short. It'll be third down and about a foot. The Colorado defense, anchored by Olson, Hicks, Price, Jones. Probably those pictures will come right in there tight too. Everybody in uh, Rosco. They're not going to let you get it inside. It's going to be very tough. Linebackers get real close. Russell will go on. Cadence. I think Colorado jump. It'll be half the distance. Got him with the cadence and the flanker going across. Offside. Watch the flanker as he comes across. Watch what he does. Now he starts chopping. Acts like he's going to take off right there. He pulls the 95. That's Price with the cadence and the action of the man in motion. He goes slow, go regular motion, and then when you want to try and pull him off, you go real short and choppy and pull him off. And it's first and goal, Texas A&M, at the Colorado four-yard line. Campbell, the man in motion, they're going that way with McElroy. Texas A&M slams it in the end zone. They had three first downs, however, in that possession via penalty. So the, well, we talked about his speed, McElroy, which is four, about 4-3. Four but we didn't mention his strength. He has won the A&M strength and conditioning title the last three years. Right there was an was a, uh, example of it. He needed it. conversion. He jerked it left a good little bit, but he got it inside just barely. And so at 5-13 to play in the first half, it's Colorado 17, Texas A&M 14. Last time on the field. And the Texas A&M defense, I think, should have caught everybody. By this time, that you're not going to run east and west on them. Not sideways, not, but no, sir. But uh, strength is still their wide receivers, and uh, he hit Caruth on a long pass that set up their second touchdown. His confidence now is uh, picked up quite a bit since the first time he went in a little earlier. He's also the team's backup punter. In this game, he's three out of three for 80 yards. He's run twice. Sneaking one time for the first touchdown and then running the corner for the second touchdown. So it's one of those days that will last forever. But, but Colorado has a little bit of a heavy heart because they know that their leader is in the locker room with a bum knee. Williams knocks it on the ground and it's knocked down by the Buffaloes and covered at about the 27-yard line. John Sunder scores highlights and an interview with Florida State's Bobby Bowden relative to running up the score. Running up the score. We're going to talk about that these days, and there should be. So as the Buffaloes get the ball back, 5:09 to play in the first half, and put it on the 27. Coming out. The Caruth and Savoy. 
Hessler sets him up with Trotman back there. Trotman has it, bounces away from one, and will come for about one yard, and that's all. Those Aggies get into your face so quick. That's Trent Driver, linebacker. This goes bang right there. Kind of interesting, Bob. You look around at the Texas A&M linebackers. Yep. You got one senior. You got a junior. Then you got freshman, sophomore, sophomore, freshman. Yep. And, they're, and they're all from Texas. Second down and nine. Pressure coming. Pass is looped up. Kids over there, and it's too long. James Kidd being covered by Ray Mickens, and here's 20. Keith, this is when Rick Neuheisel, the coach, becomes Rick, the teacher, as you know. We had dinner with him on, on Friday night, or Thursday night, excuse me, and he talked about how important it was to teach these young kids how to play this game. And when he came here as an assistant coach, he started working on the passing game. He improved their consistently, consistency greatly. The number of touchdowns is, is, is outstanding. Interceptions came way down to right now is when all of that teaching ability that he has has to come into play to keep his quarterback calm and confident here in this ball game. Keep. Third down. Trotman goes in motion, puts three wideouts over there at the top of the screen, blitz is on, Hester unloaded it and got rid of it. I mean, Trent Driver was on him before he could take a deep breath, but the kid got rid of it. When you do that, Keith, when you empty the backfield without with, on all your backs, you got nobody to block the linebackers. He was surprised, Driver, he was surprised he got in there. He's looking for somebody to hit him. We got a personal foul apparently called against uh, now let's see what uh, let, let the referee define it. The flag's way over on the sidelines. May not be as dramatic as uh, as personal foul. Yeah, all, you keep all this blitzing stuff. What does that do to a quarterback? Well, on the one hand, you like it because you got single coverage in the secondary and you got yeah. some big play people. But on the other hand, if you're not sure that you got it blocked. Then you're going to get some happy feet. You're going to throw the ball too quickly. He was offside, so it make it third down and five. And he throws the ball into a crowd. He threw it on double coverage with James Kidd. And Kidd was popped between two. Trent Driver being one of those. And he really popped Kidd. And Kidd pushed him back and then walked away from him before he got a foul. Kidd does not like the hit that Driver puts on him here. No, he doesn't. Uh, the ball was thrown. The ball was thrown where it should have been. A little reaction there. I'm not sure I'd like it either. I wouldn't either. <laughs> it's right in the chest. <laughs> but it was a clean hit. I mean, yeah, it was. <laughs> Andy Mitchell, the punt. Got a little pressure on him, but that's a beauty. I think goes up above the stadium. And Ray Mickens is having none of it, thank you. I well, should have caught that. Team. Yeah, he didn't he didn't coming. I mean, he lost 15 yards. Yep, he did. But that, that thing had snow on it. Well, I mean, it was it frosty did. coming. That's the highest one I've seen this year. <laughs> well, Rick was yelling about something that had to do when his, his quarterback was decked and uh, uh, on that blitz. But they got five yards on the offside, and he apparently wanted more. That's he's, a 59-yard punt. He's just working the, uh, the officiating crew. He's working the side judge over there. Yep. So put the ball back at the nine-yard line now, and Texas A&M trailing by three points, 17 to 14, at 4:09 to play in the first half. That was Andy Mitchell's career punt. Pulling, lets it go, and it's on the sidelines, good for seven yards to Detron Smith. Big old fullback who gets a flash of glory now and then. Most of the time, he's a blocking back. Well, you got that right. Uh, Detron is the, uh, the, uh, the leader of the, uh, of the blockers in there, and uh, McElroy is uh, certainly appreciated what Detron can do. That's only his third reception of the season for Detron Smith. He's just a blocker. Bullock is now 6 out of 11 for 74 yards. McElroy. Nothing. And they're really hunting. Number 44 was flying through there and had a piece of him before he could do anything about it. Greg Jones was at the bottom of it. 
But I mean, there are people all over him. 44 is Clifton Peters. This is a look from behind the offense. The lineman pulling. Peters comes through and gets him. So it's third down. The ball is at the 16. It's third and short four. That could have been picked off. That could certainly have been picked off. Uh, he didn't really look at his intended receiver. He just let it go for Pennell. And T.J. Cunningham was right there. So the Aggies will punt. That ball was thrown behind the yep. receiver. Yep. Pressure coming, kicks away. Going to get pretty good field position for Colorado. Fair catches at midfield with Steve Roscoe. A junior from Roseville, Minnesota. 34 yards on the punt, no return. So the Buffaloes have two minutes and 46 seconds. The last time they had the ball, the Aggies' defense just pulled them up. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. 17 to 14, and Coy Detmer, Colorado's quarterback, out of the game with an injured knee. John Hessler, 6'2", 195, from Brighton. Colorado is the quarterback, sophomore. Sets up a screen. A&M runs through it. <laughs> and Savoy loses a yard. Just too much speed for the Aggies. They run it down. I tell you, those corners are impressive. Mickens and Greer. They do a lot of things. Mickens, 5'8", 177 out of El Paso. Greer, 5'10", 178 from Alif. Second down, 11. Five-man front, down the middle. The pass is caught and close to a first down. It's the tight end, Lepsis. And that territory has been wide open all day. Matt Lepsis, 265-pound tight end from Frisco, Texas, is hauled in right at the 40, and he's... A half a yard short of his first down. Well, they throw in Lepsis, uh, Matt, just a bone every now and then. He's an ex-offensive lineman. Moved out to tight end, and he does a lot of blocking. As you mentioned, he's 265, but that's his sixth reception of the year. And that's the, you know, he's going to be open a lot, Keith. Yes. All the attention to wide receivers. Been available all day. Here's the, uh, the first down as Lyndon Henry. Runs the ball down, uh, Marlon Barnes it is, runs the ball down to the 35. Barnes is the bigger of the tailbacks at 195. And so to the 35-yard line he goes in a first down, with the clock showing a minute and 26 seconds remaining in the first half. Barnes is a sophomore out of Memphis, Tennessee. All right, Savoy to the top of the picture and Carruth to the bottom. He's looking at Carruth and he throws a knuckleball that is incomplete. He was getting some heat and let it go, and he really didn't seem to have a grip on it. The ball just fluttered away from him. Sometimes the knuckleball is easier to catch. Well, if it's not knuckling too bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's just, if it's not a good spiral, if it's just a broken spiral, that's right. But, uh, but if it's fluttered out there like some of them Mahoy Wilhelm jobs, forget it. <laughs> Or Joe Caps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second down and 10 from the 35. Hessler's pass underneath Carruth. And Carruth, he got away from one, but in the process lost his balance to the 29 yard line. That's a six yard pickup. Well, this is a nice job of uh, picking up the blitz by that inside three and just letting the ball go to your outlet receiver. Irwin, Stoltenberg, Nioli, Moore, and Thomas. Third down, big play here. He's going for Savoy, and it's too long beyond the field of play, and Savoy sort of had his man hung out, Greer, but the ball was too high. Now he's just throwing it too far downfield, 
His arm strength is, is certainly strong enough to, to out throw these speedy receivers, but you've got to keep it in the field of play. And his flow of adrenaline is flood time. Yeah, that's true. They're going for it. Two on the field goal for Foster Etienne. Well, Leslie's got a walk through the leg. Well, they're not going to have time here. Yeah, the uh, clock uh, down to eight seconds. No, well, they may talk about it here with 42 seconds remaining. Colorado's ball, fourth down and four, and leading by three. And though Leslie has the longer leg, Neal has 11 straight field goals from outside 40 yards. Vasco will hold it. On its way. And he got it. His career long at 46. And it's 20 to 14 Buffalo. McElroy has returned four kickoffs for touchdowns in his career. Aggies have two timeouts remaining. Here's special teams time, right here. Well, he might try this one. Yes, he will. He's three yards deep in the end zone, and he brings it out to the 20. Where it'll be first down. Leland McElroy turns your mouth to cut every time he gets a crack. <laughs> if you're on the other side of the ball. Yep. He's had 14 carries for 36 yards, one reception for 27. And I think that was his first uh, attempt at returning a kickoff. So they've held him well under uh, 70, 75 yards in the first half in total yardage. 32 seconds, they can have three plays. Maybe four. Not with running plays. Now they'll spend the time out, or will they just let the clock run down and go to the clubhouse trailing by six? They're letting it run. AM's averaging starting point in the first half of play has not been particularly good. It's been their own 17 yard line, so. Field position hasn't been a particularly yeah, a good ally for the Aggies. And they will go to the clubhouse now for the score at halftime. Colorado 20 and Texas A&M 14. Coming up, the Prudential Halftime Report. Ball game and it has had its moment. I'll guarantee you it's been a furious pace, almost a frantic pace at times. And Colorado's intent and hope to wear down the Aggies at 5,300 plus feet. So far, hasn't done anything, but Jason Leslie has done his job. He has allowed Texas A&M to return, actually just one uh, good return on the kicks. He's knocked that ball way out of play. When we asked yesterday to New High, so he's going to kick it to him, he said, yeah, we're just going to kick it out of the end zone. Here's a look at the numbers uh, after the first half. Look at the plays. Uh, 19 more plays for Colorado. Nobody can run the football. This is defensive statistics if you like them. Total yardage for AM only 113. Each team with a turnover, and each team scored after they got a turnover. So here comes R.C. Slocum's Texas Aggies with Leland McElroy and Beatron Smith lined up in the backfield, and Corey Pullett throws on first down, complete to Cannell. And Albert Cannell, who came from junior college, he's one of five J.C. transfers on this Aggie team. He is brought down by T.J. Cunningham. Okay, Keith, watch what they do the first time out. They fake play action and through the wide receiver. Pulling 6 of 12, 74 yards. He had an interception. McElroy only 39 yards rushing. And there you see the leading receivers. They need a yard for the first down on second down. Give it to McElroy. That little skip before he plants and heads into the line, and he's got the first down. To look at the first half possessions for AM. 
They had the ball six times, really, that one right before the half. They didn't even try to score. They didn't have it very long. Look at the number of plays each possession. They scored one touchdown, but look at the where, where they get the ball. They have not had the ball outside their own 25-yard line all day. Colorado making some changes now. Alan Wilbon comes out. Mike Phillips comes in to replace him at a linebacker position. Kenny Wilkins checks in. He is a nickelback. And here's Bullock to throw. Has a man in his face and the pass is incomplete on first down. The pass intended for Smith out of the backfield and Rosga decked him. Aggressive defense. Uh, here, look at the stories. Offensively, AM needed a balanced attack. Unfortunately, it is balanced, but it's not very productive. And defensively, their cornerback speed versus the wide receivers. Colorado's wide receivers have 140 yards receiving. It's kind of a standoff. It's a little bit in favor, I would say, at this point of uh, Colorado. Second down and 10. That was Greg Jones in Bullock's face on that last play. Five man front for the Buffaloes. Aggies uh, have McRae in motion. That gives them three wide outs at the top. Bullock looks that way, goes that way. The pass is intercepted, but the whistles had stopped the play. And so it's going to be called before the snap. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. And Greg Jones is mumbling because he caught the ball. That is the 16th penalty of the ball game and the ninth on the Aggies. Corey Pulling uh, still uh, is uh, still limping, I think, a little bit from that. The guy's walking on his car. Yeah, I think somebody stepped on him in the first first half, and they just, just stepped on him again. So it's second down and 15 after the penalty. Pulling's got it, throws to the sidelines to Smith, and Smith is rolled out of bounds by Donnell Leo Mitty, who comes from the American Samoa. And who's tougher than a doorknob? Well, it's, uh, you know, the first possession of the third quarter after the teams have gone over what the defenses are trying to do to them. Pulling, Steve Ensminger told Pulling, what we have to do is go out, throw on first down, throw on running down, loosen them up, and then go back and try to get some running game going. But obviously, uh, the Buffaloes and A.J. Kristoff defensively have made some adjustments also. Third down, 14. Will they go to the middle? He's lucky that it is not going the other way. The ball was intended for Chris Sanders, who has good height at 6'4", but there were four Buffaloes in the neighborhood. Sean Terry will punt the fifth time. His long was his first, 68. And Roscoe waits for it for Colorado. 20 to 14, the Buffaloes lead. Number three, AM. And that's a high hanger, but it doesn't turn over for him, and so it's going to settle down at the 36-yard line. It's a 36-yard punt. 12-34 to go in the third quarter. Receiver with 73 yards on full reception. And John Hessler brings him up with Herschel Trotman behind him in a single back and double wide, two tight ends. Roll it. Look ass to Tennyson McCarty, the tight end. He stuffed it right in between the 40 and the 1 and picked up about two yards, but Mickens and company were all over it. Trying to go with a safe pass, and I think Texas A&M anticipating just exactly that. So Rick now with a major teaching job in front of him as Detmer lingers on the sidelines because of the knee injury. Second down and eight. On it with Troutman. And Troutman is up about the 41-yard line. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith and Rick Neuheiser went to the locker room. I asked him what he told John Hessel before he won the ball game. He simply looked at him and said, this is your chance. Just go out and do it. 
I asked him how it would change the offense in the second half. He said what they've got to do is limit the offense, do the things that John Hessler feels comfortable with. He has not had that many reps, so we're just going to keep things throttled back a little bit for him. Kate? See, Keith, yes. I, I think that's a mistake in practice a lot of coaches make. They give all the snaps to the number one guy, not enough to number two. Hessler's pass is away. And he was in a bit of a jam back there with the two great big old laggers putting some heat on him. And Phil Savoy had broken free. And if he'd have just taken his time, he'd yeah. have had him because he got his feet got a little happy on him and he yeah. threw it quickly. So they'll have to punt it. Andy Mitchell. You got 10 Aggies up there. They're coming. And they got him thinking about it, and he kind of half shanked it. And on the bounce, it is taken by Mickens, and he pays for it at the 28. So it winds up a 37 yard punt for the six yard return. Tomorrow night on ABC, Hour of Fun, America's Funniest Home Videos. And this is AM's best starting point in entire ball game. Michael Roy is outside to about the 36 yard. So go from the 28 go up to about the 36 and that'll figure eight yards for him. And an Aggie's down. It's Brooks number 78 who just pulled and uh, blocked for him. Holding a knee 10 47 to go in the third quarter. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. Leland McElroy in the ball game has carried it 17 times. He's gained 50 yards. And he's moving around with the ball and going down for a loss of about two yards. Matt Russell, number 16, made the defensive play for Colorado. Russell is the leader of this defense. Second in the on the team in uh, tackles uh, this year. Take a look from behind. Watch the footwork of Leland McElroy. Well, go inside. Nope, I can't go there. Trying to slide it to the outside. Good footwork, but just no place to go. Their third down conversion is one for six so far. This ball is on the 34, third down and four, and the pass is completed to Connell. And Al Connell, who is a junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has the first down. Your crowd today at Folsom Field, 53,849. That is the largest crowd ever at this stadium. And it bodes well for the coming Big 12 conference play. Mm -hmm. Steve Hatchell, the Big 12 commissioner here this afternoon watching the ball game. Steve's a good man. He'll do a very nice job. And we uh, saw Carl James uh, tonight. He's retiring and wish him all the best. 45-yard line, same neighborhood. They're going right at T.J. Cunningham now as Gene Lowry comes into the ball game. Senior out of Kilgore, and he makes the catch. So they're working on Cunningham. They may have to drop one of those safeties over there. No, no. Well, they're not going to do that, Keith. That's going to be there all day, and, and Colorado will give them that because what they're doing is they're shutting down the bread and butter, the thing that everybody wants to go to on AM, and that's McElroy, and they got single coverage on the outside. 
All right, they move Jones now from the top to the bottom of the alignment, and the play is inside. And the guy making the hit is Kerry Hicks, number 94, on McElroy. So they flip-flopped him that time. They moved Wilbon out of the end of the game and took Phillips out. And uh, this is what some people are going to consider a big, big upset in the Pac-10 if it holds that way with Washington State beating UCLA. But I don't think it's that much of an upset because the Bruins really beat up. Second down and eight. Eight forty. Go in the third quarter and Corey Fully quickly looks and then throws and that's got to be a penalty. I mean, goodness sakes, he mugged him. Melvin Davis had a double handful of shirt and Gene Lowry had no chance. So that's going to be pass interference, 15 yards and a first down. The one thing that's been constant is the outside passing to the receivers of AM. Here they, Davis, number four, gets up and bump and run this time. Grabs a hold of him there, and then when the ball is coming, grabs him with his back or left hand and spins him around. Unfortunately for Davis, the official was, saw, was right behind him and saw that backhand. But that's what's there. They're taking away the running game with McElroy with eight and nine guys and one on one on the outside. First down argues there, moving it here in the third quarter. Pitch it to McElroy, looking around, nothing doing. Eat him up. It's Matt Russell again, and looks like now that maybe Russell has become McElroy's spy, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Let me just try and show you. You've got one on one out here, and you've got one on one over here, and all of the rest, just hold on to it now. All of the rest are in here concentrating on the running the tailback right here. That's what they're going. Nine guys to stop the tailback. The two outside guys are on their own. Six times McElroy has been tackled for a loss in the ball game. Second down, 13. Pulley lets it go. He's got it. Cut out. Touchdown. Albert cut out. He beat Elton Davis, who was playing it a little less than uh, help. But that was a well executed yeah. play and a well thrown ball. The offensive coordinator, Steve Ensminger, saw the same thing we saw. Hold it just a minute. Watch this receiver as he's going to go straight down the field. Throws the ball straight up at good throw by Pulley. It's a nice play. That's where you got to do your business. The Aggies are looking for the lead on this kick by Kyle Bryant, a sophomore out of College Station. Hometowner, and he gives them the lead. 7.46 to play in the third quarter, and it's 21-20, Aggie. And on man. Cannell is the one that earlier had dropped the ball right through his hands, and Davis had intercepted it, set up a touchdown. This time, they're reverses. Lights. Ryan Pillions will kick it off now for Texas A&M. Oh, he didn't get a whole lot of it. Kind of popped it up, and a fair catch was called. Uh-oh. And dropping back, all the way back to the 15-yard line, uh, Scott Siegel, uh, uh, Ty and Ots Peters, it's Peters, Clifton Peters, a linebacker, called a fair catch. So he gives them relatively poor field position. Yes, you never back up. Let the guys in back of you move forward to catch it. For Colorado, we talked about the number four offense against number four defense. Colorado had 20 points and 189 yards, doing pretty well. And defensively, they got a holding that boy under 225 yards. They're doing a pretty good job of that in the first half. All right, here come the Buffaloes now with John Hessler at quarterback. Rochelle Trotman is the tailback. They've got three wideouts. And they run it with Trotman, and he's got some daylight. And he's out to the 30-yard line, and the Buffaloes have some real estate behind them now. 15-yard pickup. Look from behind the offensive line. 
It's a good one. Stoltenberg is 64. Comes around the block of Nioli. Look at the gaping hole in there. 78 is Thomas. That's a nice job of, uh, of blocking the offensive line. That time, defensively, they weren't stunting and weren't blitzing. Probably be one of the only the few times they won't be doing that this half. Trapman again, and he shakes one loose in the backfield, but doesn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. He got away from Edward Jasper. But by that time, there were too many of those fellows wearing the white there, and they took him down. So there's a loss of two yards. It'll be second down and 12. Scoreboard saying 11, but it's 12. It's been a substitution game, Keith, all day. Uh, I don't know if our viewers can see it, but when Colorado brings in three wide receivers, and then brings in a fifth defensive back. strategy all day long. This is Trotman popping out of there. First down. Big run by Herschel Trotman. Who came to Colorado from Naples, Florida. He's a sophomore. Number 39, Allen, is the free safety. 28, Driver is an inside linebacker. Driver gets blocked. Allen has the chance. The safety's got to make the play. That time he didn't. And the Buffaloes are stomping up at the 44 on their side of the field. Hessler fakes it, keeps it, looks to throw it, goes down the middle, tight end, had it right in his hands and dropped it. Matt Lepsis had a big, big play. I mean, he might have scored. Tried to catch it with his hands instead of with his body. Yeah. <laughs> Should be. That's those tight ends, those, those. Uh, Look out now, you're walking in deep water. I know it. <laughs> he, he's a big ugly, though, Keith. You can call him a big ugly because, you know, he's an off. He's more an offensive lineman than he is a tight end. Yeah, but he sick. does a good job for this offense. He just blew a touchdown possibility there. I don't know if he could have run that play. Well, you might be right. <laughs> he had some those little guys down there to help him. But you know, he was open because everybody's covering the wide receivers, and that was the right guy to go to. And it's second down and ten. Hessler <laughs> has the ball knocked out, and the Aggies are all over it. First down for AM at the Colorado 37 yard line. Warwick Coleman is on the ball. Boy, they came in a hurry, and Hessler didn't have time to even think about taking breath. It's the inside linebacker is going to come straight up the middle. Now, watch the back. The back's got to get over there and try to pick him up. That's the back's man. He runs into the quarterback, knocks the ball loose, turnover, AM. Well, the Buffalo ship's getting a little leaky right here. Inexperience right there. 37 yard line, first down, AM. Cornell wide to the bottom. And McCray to the top. Coleg looking. He's looking for Cannell, and he threw it too high, and it's incomplete. T.J. Cunningham. Yeah, they're going back, it. going back to the wide receivers where they've done some good. Go back to the previous play. 43 is Holman. Gets in, knocks the ball loose. Troutman should have moved up, and Hessler should have given him a little bit of time, or he should have checked out of the play. Talking to the quarterback there, he's got to give him time to move around to pick up the man, but check out it. Going on quickly to McCray. McCray just, uh, no, it's Sanders, Chris Sanders. And Sanders, who's the big guy at 6'4", 220 plus. And he turns in a big play in an Aggie first down at the 17. The last three plays for the Aggies have been passes to the outside or wide receivers. That's where you got the single coverage. Get it out there and let your guys do some work. Make it the 14, just inside of it. Finally went out of bounds. Oh, they're threatening. They lead 21 to 20. Five quarter to go in the third quarter, and they're knocking on the door again, and their whistle blowing. And one of the big fellas may have got started a little, no, a little soon, and now it's Colorado who's uh, calling time to talk. And they're charging the Buffaloes with a timeout. 
There's a flag back in the end zone, but he clearly they're going to pick it up. Okay. They had so, 12 guys on the field. That's, that's why right. they called timeout. That's what it was. You're exactly right. You just counted it. <laughs> that's the second time. So the Colorado Buffaloes are in timeout. And they're in trouble because Texas A&M right now is threatening to take control of this football game. And they're doing it in a way that they're not accustomed to. Their bread and butter is, is, is really been taken away from them. They, they, they have to go to the, the wide receivers in the passing game to move the ball. And that's what they've done. Aggie Van came up with the team. They performed at halftime. I don't think very many people left the stadium. They were good. I was, I've never seen them before. Oh, I sit all day and watch them. Texas A&M came into this ball game ranked number three in the country. And that is one of the reasons right there. They get a lot of uh, notoriety, not a lot of publicity, but he's he's the winningest active quarterback in college football. Aggies opened with a victory over LSU, and everybody kind of yawned, and suddenly they found out last Saturday about LSU when they beat Auburn. They beat a pretty good football team in their opening game. Ball is just inside the 14-yard line. First down. Tackle roll. And they get him at the 12. Alan Wilbon and Steve Ruska make the tackle. They are just not going to allow McElroy to beat him. If, if they're going to get beat, it's going to be with pulling, throwing to the outside receivers. Ball just shy of the 11. And him being very deliberate. The first quarter of today's game was just sheer chaos. Just made him. Yes. And now it's become very deliberate. Pass. No. Play turned in. It's Chris Sanders and Pulling let it go outside. And Kenny Wilkins was on the cover. Be throwing this ball right at us. From the reverse side of the field. He just throws that ball behind the receiver, but you saw number three, Leomidi. He says, if I throw it inside, Leomidi's going to be there. Don't break the route in so quickly. Get wider and stay wide. And it's the timing between the quarterback and the wide receiver is not good. All right, Sanders is back up there on the top of your picture. The big receiver, Fennell to the left. They go underneath to McElroy, and Leland never had a chance. Yeah. Never had a chance, because they were all over him before the ball even one of the, he was in he's in the trenches yeah. there and the big guys are knocking him around watch as McElroy is is right here and the linebacker is going to follow him right there we right up in his right up in his uh, back pocket one of the plays that in it like was a screen play they have not been able to get that playoff because there's been a linebacker next to him all day long 28 yard field goal try now for Kyle Bryant well, the NCAA record a uh, long kick of 61 yards for a freshman. And he's a hometown. Block. I don't know who got it. Might have been Hicks. His only miss was blocked by LSU, and now he gets one blocked here. At by a &M. I think you're right, Keith. I think it was Hicks, but I think he kicked it low. Yeah, he got to it awful quick, didn't he? I'm yeah. not sure the guy yeah. even had the holder had the ball down. 94, jumping. He's really quick. Hard to tell there, but look how quick he steps in to hit this ball. Pow! I mean, it's gone right now. I guess he was down, but it was really quick. 
It was Hicks that got his hand up, but it uh, wasn't that long a field goal. You didn't have to hit it that. You could just hit it like an extra point. That's 94. So right they there. turn him away, and Colorado takes over at the 20 with Trotman behind Hessler and Trotman looking for some daylight, find some. And picks up about eight yards. Next Saturday at noon Eastern, 11 Central, here comes the old doubleheader on ABC. Those are the games at the top end of it. And then uh, 3.30 Eastern, Notre Dame and Ohio State. Irish won big today. Buckeyes were leading a while ago over Pitt. Check your local listings for the game in your area or call your cable operator. For the games that might be available on pay-per-view, they're all coming from ABC Sports. 4-10 to go third quarter. This is Trump. And Trotman has the first down. And they're getting a little feisty now. They're showing off a little bit as uh, Kidd and Greer got into it for a second. 18 carries and 75 yards now for Trotman. A semblance of a running game now for uh, the Buffaloes. One point ball game, 21 20 Aggies. And the big story of the day, Coy Detmer, injured knee out of action. He's on the sideline. But we think that's only for emotional impact. Hessler has some time. Goes down the middle, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Phil Savoy. There's double coverage on Savoy. But that's the way I think you have to do it uh, with Hester. You've got to use the strength, and that's your wide receivers. You've got to get them downfield and throw a deep to it. I think that time he had a better chance going outside than throwing inside to Savoy. Ruth had one-on-one. -on -one. Since his first drive, when he was so dramatic, Hester's gone 4 of 11 for 18 yards. That first possession was something. Here he comes, option, and he's up to the 45-yard line. And if they give him a good mark, he'll have the first down. Dennis Allen, first man to get to him. So they'll probably trot the chains all the way across the field. This is what's been going on in the Big Eight today. Nebraska almost merciful in their game. And just winning. How about that Oklahoma score? They were having a hard time for a while with North Texas, but now they've rolled it up, you see. Oklahoma is Colorado's uh, opponent next week up at Norman. So that's, uh, that's going to weigh heavily. The coaching staff here, in, which works in the Dell Ward uh, building over there, they're going to be uh, busy this week. They probably want to reshape a lot of their offense. Well, Wisconsin will butt, didn't they? Baylor got a win over NC State. Of course, Notre Dame founded Texas. And uh, Rice LSU is tonight. So is TCU Vanderbilt. Hard to imagine the Southwest Conference going away. It just turns out seven. This is Trotman. He's caught his own backfield. And is going to lose. Walker, number 32, had penetration. Larry Walker, he just messed up everything. We mentioned the Big 12 a while ago. This is the way it's going to break down. You see the Ford schools from Texas plus the two teams out of Oklahoma will make up the Southern Division of the Big 12. And the Northern Division will consist of, of the old members of the Big 8, if you will. That's a pretty attractive group. I, I don't think it's been decided yet, Keith, if they're going to have a championship game at the end of the year. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, as, as, as good as that SEC championship game has gone. That's Cunningham, isn't it? Looks like T.J. Cunningham is the man hurt on the play. Oh, it's 65. Okay. That's Nioli. Nioli, the right guard. Well, that'd be a loss. Huge loss. He's a new daddy, too, Chris is. How many of you knew this? The Texas A&M was the second winningest team in the 90s. Colorado is pretty obvious, but A&M has just been very quietly going along. A&M is the only one in that group that has not won a national championship in the 90s. Chris Nauli from uh, uh -oh, uh, Hawaii, 295-pound guard going to the sidelines.
That'll be Clint Moore, senior from Longmont, coming in. Kind of interesting, too, in this realignment, Bob. Next year, Nebraska will play Colorado in the last game of the season instead of the usual game with Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. kind of still cold anyway. <laughs> yes, wherever they play it. Cold, yeah. Second down and about 10. Hessler goes up the middle. On the run, it's the roof, and he can't track it down. He had uh, Ray Mickens running Mickens with him. right there, yes. Well, Mickens, Mickens is almost following Carruth now wherever he goes, especially when he gets into the slot. And he can run with him almost step for step. Carruth is uh, bigger. timed in 4-2-9. There he is, Mickens. 5-11, and, of course, uh, Mickens is only 5-8. Hessler won out of his last six passes. Maybe he ought to try to go back to that tight end. He's got Lepsis in there right now. Tennyson McCarty seemingly is the better of the tight end receiver. Aggie's got six people up there, and a seventh is coming, and Haskell's got a problem. And they will punt it. Brandon Mitchell, Reggie Brown, and then comes Maxwell and everybody else. Well, they had a little blitz on, and just uh, Haskell just got a little happy, and... Turn it under. Mitchell in the punt. His fourth of the day. Mickens is going back to receive it. Andy Mitchell's long run was a 59-yarder that was left to balance. No pressure. Ball won't turn over, though. It depends on the bounce here, and it bounces sideways. Coming back up field, guys. Let's knock it down. So the ball is slapped dead up around the 27, 28 yard line. And this is how the AP top 25 looked when the day started. Colorado is the only one in the top 10 that is losing at this point. So the ball is just inside the 29 for the Aggies as they take possession. And I think this will be their best starting point outside of the time they fumbled. They had the uh, fumble recovery. After a punt, at least. The first half uh, field position starting points were not very good. Well, how about Maryland, Keith? Uh, that's a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, huh? I think so. Yeah. And their top gun quarterback haven't played yet. Yeah. Next week. First down and 10. And Sanders in motion. He looks at him. He's rolling that way. He's got him, but he goes the instead to Cannell. Sanders is wide open. Absolutely wide open, and let's check in with another fellow who's wide open, John Thomas. in the wheels for the Irish next week. Next week. It's not supposed to be that easy, though. You're not supposed to get that open. Second down and 10, and falling down. From the snap of the ball is Corey Pullen. I think even the center of the guard probably stepped on his foot. Had that look about it. Trying to throw the ball away. Looks Watch like your feet. Yep, there it is. It's the left guard. It's Calvin Collins. That's uh, Calvin uh, Collins is the roommate of McElroy. He's a big guy, too. Room with him for three years. Kind of takes care of him, he says. He says he's 6'3 and 290. He says, I'm just a fun-loving kid. I'm just a little boy trapped in a big man's body. <laughs> 290. Third down, and my goodness, that's more like 17. Bullock throws underneath, and Smith dropped the ball. Oh, it wasn't well thrown. It was thrown low down around the knees. It's a well-designed play, though. They had him wide open. That's the fullback. All eyes are on McElroy. And he was wide open. Watching right here, the fullback, nobody is going to go with it. Kind of sneaks underneath, makes. If he completes this ball, he runs for a long way. And this Brooklyn. Sean Perry's in the punt. Loops it out. Rosca calls a fair catch. And 
and they'll put it in play at about the 39-yard line after a 39-yard punt with 57 seconds to play in the third quarter. And the Aggies are leading the Buffaloes 21 to 20. You know, Keith, at the beginning of the, uh, the game, I said we were looking forward to seeing two of the best players in the country, and Troy Detmer and then Leland Nakua. Well, Troy went out early in the first half with a knee injury, but we haven't seen much of him. And Leland McElroy has been stopped cold by nine defenders. And, and what it's gotten down to is both offenses have had to play left-handed. They haven't had the, uh, the benefit of having what they'd like to do. So it's who's going to adjust who's going to win this ball game. Kessler pitches the ball to Carew. It's got some blocks. He's got Mickens after him. He's got a first down. Mickens gets him at the 45-yard line. Ray Mickens saw it coming. And with his great speed, was over to get him. But that play was well executed. Now one of the stories was cornerback speed against wide receiver speed. And there you saw it. Mickens was, wasn't his fan, but he made the play. And that saved the touchdown. There was nobody else. He doesn't look like he's breathing hard either. I don't know. Maybe the, the altitude is a state of mind the first day, but the second day, Aggies don't play next week. They got a week to get over it. Then they got to go play spike back to protect the tech. Kessler looking for a pass. Now he goes big. He's got Kidd. He missed him. He had a touchdown with James Kidd and didn't hit him. Play at him open, too. You got to believe that that's a touchdown if Coy Detton was in the lineup. He just threw it too far upfield and not enough across field. Here's a look at Detmer. Greer's trotting off the field and coming to the sidelines like he might be winded. And he's out of there for the moment. That was a touchdown with Coy Detmer's in there. There's no question about it. Andre Williams is in at the corner. He's got to try to cover Carruth. He's got fresh legs. They throw it to Carruth. He's got the ball right in front of a new man. And he's out of bounds just at the marker. Carruth with all the speed. Just going to run it out. Pick up the first down. I don't think he's quite late. It's going to be close. Just I'll try to change across the field and see about it. But that was, that was quick recognition on the fact that Greer had come out and they uh, put the roof right in front of that's, Williams and go right ahead. That's for sure. But as a freshman, they nicknamed him Scud, as in the missile, because he fired off the line really hard, but nobody knew where, where he was going. He said, I kind of liked it for a while, but I, I don't know. <laughs> the Ruth now has caught the ball five times for 83 yards, and Donovan Greer is back in after having a whiff of oxygen. Marlon Barnes is a single back. Three Aggies tackle him as he picks up about three yards, and the clock shows 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Second down and seven. Watch the clock. Watch the clock. New Heisel's alerting his quarterback. Doesn't have to run a play. I don't believe. No, they didn't turn on the 25 seconds. in 21 the number three Aggies number seven Colorado 20 the ball rests just at the uh, 30 yard line and this is the story of the game as Coy Detmer in the first half twists his knee and John Hessler steps in as his replacement been doing well but this play happened just a few plays back 
had a man open way downfield and threw it too far downfield. If he'd thrown it more to the left side, Kidd could have ran to it a certain touchdown. That was the, the certain touchdown, as, as Bob called it, but there was another time when he had a man open and missed him as well. He threw the ball long. So there have been two occasions in which the Buffaloes had opportunities and Hester didn't hook up with his receiver. He's a 6'1", 190-pound sophomore from Brighton, Colorado, a baseball player, and pitches the ball late to Lyndon Henry, and Henry picks up a Marlon Barnes, it is, and Barnes picks up a first down. So, number nine, Marlon Barnes, bangs it close to Marker, and here's John Sumner. First down for Colorado at the 20. Aggie's got four men down right now. Hester with all day. Now throws and it is caught. McCarty touchdown. on the year, no touchdowns. The backup tight end makes a big play. One for two. You up by five, you go for two. And Colorado spins a fan out rather than waste an opportunity. A&M did, and they keep. And they pointed in Colorado's direction. goes the other way with it. It is an A&M timeout. So 26-21, as you see McCarty score the touchdown. We're waiting on a two-point try. In college and pro, that if you're ahead or behind by a certain number, you always go for two. And when, you're, when you go for two points when you're leading, is when you're up by one, obviously, so you get the three. And they're up by five here. So you want to get up by seven. If you miss it, you're still up more than a field goal. So all these charts are upstairs in the press box with the assistant coaches, and they signal down, let's go for two. And they work on these two-point plays all the time in practice. Uh-oh, look there at this. Take a timeout. So that's a good idea by NM. Anything strange? Anything strange, take a timeout. So they've uh, taken one of the special plays out of Rick Neuheiser's book. There you go. You got a you got a bunch of guys out here, and then you got all these receivers out here. Now you got to have so many guys on the line. AM only had two over here, so they're saying, wait a minute, we don't have enough to cover these three. So uh, the smart thing to do. I think that they would have run a play from there. I really do. Uh, he bore didn't some have to throw it quick <laughs> because he didn't have many guys right. <laughs> around the ball. It bore some resemblance to what was once called the old swinging gate. But, yes. Uh, they had broken the gate and split it up. Well, that brings AM down only one time out, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's decision making time, and we see they're playing their games with it. But A&M spending timeouts to do it. They got one left now, just one. That might be expensive down the road because we've got 14-28 to play in this game. Rick Neuheisel, the second youngest coach in college football. Ron Cooper at Louisville is four days young. Marlon Barnes is the running back. Hester's pass is thrown to the corner. And incomplete. 
And Hess was flat on his back. I mean, he was taken down in a hurry. Aggies did not give him any time. Well, he had a linebacker or a defensive back in his face. 21. Sean That's Horn. Horn, yes. He is the nickelback that's been playing a lot. He just blitzed, and that stopped the whole play. Allie Uchtin. Now, that's a knuckleball, Keith. You talk about a knuckleball. Yeah, but look at Anderson. He almost caught that. Thing. Almost caught it. If it hadn't been a knuckleball, he would have caught it. <laughs> <laughs> so the two point play goes awry. And at 14 28, it's 26 Colorado and 21 Texas AM. And the Buffaloes' Jason Leslie now will kick off. Well, this, to some degree, is sort of what we expected, but it's happening in an unexpected way. Well, it's not pretty because the defenses are really dominating and they've been disruptive and, you know, last week we did Tennessee and Florida and boy, was that fun. Yeah, a lot of uh, passes here and passes. This week, not much defense. This week, a lot of defense. Even though there are quite a few points That's on right. the board. That's exactly right. Because you've got speed and skill in a lot of different positions in there, you can't hold them down forever. All right, here comes Leslie. And he's knocked it into the end zone, but McElroy, only a yard deep, is going to come with it. And he comes out to the 23-yard line. Here's the Buffalo touchdown. He's got plenty of time on this one, but he can't see because everybody's in the center. So he slides to the outside and points to McCarthy. He says, get out, feel a little bit. Get out, feel. I'll lay this up. That is a great catch. Watch this catch. This is outstanding. This guy doesn't catch a lot of balls. The backup tight end made a huge catch. That's a touchdown pass by John Hester now in relief of Troy Decker and two touchdowns of rushing John yes. Hester. Texas A&M averages 499 yards in their first two games offense today. So far, only 210. Crowd trying to help the defense now as Pulling stands up quickly and throws in the complete. Number 37 was right there, and Marcus Washington, uh, he might well, if he'd have realized the ball was coming to that man, he might have had that thing going the other way. There's a look at the numbers after three quarters. The score at that time was 21-20. Uh, Plays, big advantage for Colorado. There's a total yardage for uh, a and m Keith just mentioned they usually have nearly 500. Turnovers. Second and 10. Let's it go for Canal, and he can't track it down. DJ Cunningham running with him. You've got to throw that, Keith. a and has got to keep doing what they're doing. They've tried throughout the game to go back to McElroy on different things, screens and swing passes. There is a man in his back pocket on every play. That doesn't mean you go away from him entirely. You've still got to keep going back to him, but you've got to keep going outside of your receivers. That's where your single coverage is, and you may miss it three times, but you'll hit it once for a big one. Third and ten. Why is T.J. Cunningham dragging an arm? They go that way again, throw it underneath to the fullback, and Deacon Smith will be well short of the first down. But T.J. Cunningham, Bob, is running along over there, the corner dragging it, and his left arm is hanging. I think he's trying to sucker the, sucker the uh, guys to get him to throw his way. I think he wants some action. <laughs> <laughs> he's not so. I think it's a whole action, a hoax. Sean Terry is in the front now as a gust of wind comes whipping over Folsom Stadium. Flags are quite stiff. Pressure coming, kick is away. Low line drive. Roska calls fair catch. And maybe if he'd have waited, he'd have brought it back some because that was really ripped right to it. 13 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Over the years of bumped heads and guys who are up from the very tippy top. This is Lyndon Henry. Big run. For the big sophomore from Port Arthur. And it's a first down up around the 42-yard line. The offensive line 
Watch the center. The center is going to snap the ball. 64 is the center. He's going to snap it and pull. Smith is 52. He gets out there and gets a piece of something. And then the rest of it is just Henry, who fumbled earlier in the ball game, but made up for it there. I think Aggies are getting a little winded. It might be. 5,334 feet, remember. Been doing a lot of substituting in the uh, both offensively and defensively, but we'll get to you later. I walked up the hill from the parking lot and almost expired this morning. Are you kidding me? Pat Williams brings down Lyndon Henry, and uh, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will be at the Silver Dome in Detroit. Harry Sanders and the Lions and company trying to get themselves a win. Boy, have they got a tour against the San Francisco 49ers and Steve Young. That's at 9 o'clock, 8 Central, here on ABC Sports. How about that game last week? Uh, the Dolphins, I, I was a little surprised at, uh, at Pittsburgh and why they didn't put up much of a fight. I still think San Francisco and Dallas have got the advantage in the whole league. It looks like yeah. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, repeat second down. So the Buffaloes blow concentration, cost them five. Here's money. Keith, you and Bob are talking about the altitude and how it's wearing on Texas A&M. When I talked to the trainer, he said at halftime, he went in, it was the first time all season long that the Aggies haven't had to put anybody on IV or they haven't cramped up. So he feels like his team is in great shape and that the altitude is more psychological and they're, they're in this ball game and it won't bother them. Yeah, well, different thing though. You don't need the IV end to help. Well, that means the temperature last week in Tulsa when they played at home was 120 degrees on the artificial turf. Here goes Henry trying to get outside. And uh, they rope him in after he picks up a couple. So they're going to be looking at third down and short. Reggie Brown, number 46, leading the tacklers there with some help from his pals. Trent Driver, 28 in. Reggie leads the team in tackles this year. He's a one of those linebackers that is really quick. 6'2", 232 pounds. He's a senior. And he's from Austin. You can say that about almost all these defenders for the Aggies. They are really quick. Third down and a yard. Third and 11. Third and 11. Here's Hester putting it up. He's got the move under. Had it in his hands. We'll go all season, Keith, without seeing as many of one-on-one -on -one confrontations about good receivers and good defensive backs. I mean, they're out here all day playing man-to-man. -man. This is a good throw. You have got to throw it where he threw it because Mickens had good coverage. Strong win. That win really whipped it. Now, watch this punt. He got it to turn over, though, and it just bores a hole in it. And it's going, and it's going, and it's slapped back. Where did they put it? Well, if the rule is if it breaks the plane of the goal line, yeah. it's in, it's in, it, in. it broke the plane, but the ball itself was over and into the uh, end zone. And when it breaks the plane, now in the NFL, it's got to hit the ground. There's a look at that win. He was punting into that win. Got a 58 yarder out of it. Yeah. I'm sure he wasn't worried about kicking it into the end zone. Aggies didn't have anybody back there either because they didn't uh, want to be messing with it with that wind blowing like it is. Sometimes if you get it up there and get a fail drag, it'll start backing up and you, you can't crack it down. So they get a break. The ball comes out to the 20. First down. And AM and Coley will have the win in the fourth quarter. Leland McElroy at the line of scrimmage. The offensive line surge is good for two yards. Time permitting, thrifty car rental post-game report with scores and highlights from about the nation. I don't know, have there been any real big, big surprises today? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Washington State, UCLA yeah. will probably come into the category of the least of surprise. Miami Virginia beat. Tech, but yeah. I don't know how much of a surprise that is. Yeah. Tech's pretty good team, right? Look at this right here. 121 yards for McElroy. The average is 322 a game. There they go out there outside to Gene Laurie, and what a heck of a play that was by the tough guy, the 
secondary is Steve Rosga. He saw that play coming. He smelled it. And he took off like a bulldog, and he just zeroed it. You can hear this one. Well, he thought he had a mismatch. Look at the safety. Rosga's getting over there late. So he takes the ball, just throws it out there. Rosga sees it coming and gets to him before he can make a move on it. That's a heady play by Rosga. It's third down and seven. He's got a man, and he missed him. He had Albert Connell wide open and threw the ball high and behind him. And the Aggies are two of 11 on third down conversion. That's tough. Colorado leads it 26-21. He had him open, but he didn't have him open at the time when he was supposed to be open. So you've got to adjust. You drop him back to throw, he wasn't open, but you've got to adjust to what you see. Wind with him, and he hits a low line drive that's going to go over the head be a of Ruska. <laughs> and it's going to go all the way into the end zone. 76 yards. But it comes back to the 20. So it's a net 56. Over the third ranked Aggies, 9.28 remaining. Obviously, there's plenty of time. But. The clock can get away from you real quick in the fourth quarter. And Texas A&M would like to control it and punch it down the field if they could. Right now, Colorado has the ball. First down at the 20-yard line. And Hessler rolls out looking and throws his tight end. Lexus is wide open. And he rumbles like an 18-wheeler. Did you say he rumbled? <laughs> Here's Lexus right here. The play is going to go out this way, and he's going to find an open area right down here in the middle of the defensive coverage. He just sneaks out there. If a guy that weighs 265 pounds can rumble, he can sneak. 49 yards. Here's the rumbling part right here. Big play. First down, pass. Into the win. Put it on the 31. 49-yard play, first down Colorado, Herschel Trotman is the running back. And he's got it, and he's got a little crack for about three, four yards. Number 95, Edward Jasper, got a piece of him. Big fellow from Troop, Texas. Carl Durrell, Keith, is the offensive coordinator for the Buffaloes, and good friend of uh, Rick Neuheisel's. When Rick got the job, that was one of the first assignment set that he made was to bring Carl Dorrell back with him and I asked Carl yesterday I said, who calls the plays they're talking together right now he says well we kind of give and take a little bit so there's Carl over on the right side so we give, give and take he calls some I call some the wide receiver for uh, Blue Eyes at UCLA Trotman finally controls it breaks two tackle and get back to the line of scrimmage Boy, I mean, those Aggies were shooting bullets at him, and he got away from that win. The Vietnamese linebacker, that had him way back there behind the line of scrimmage. The Buffs almost lost another quarterback because Hester right. was really hit. we got to take that option out of the, <laughs> of the offense. Well, that's one of the things that Hester does better than Detmer. Take a look at this. And him in the second half, only six yards rushing. Third down, and uh, boy, it's a good five. Trotman dribbling around in the traffic. And takes a hit. And I think that hit came from the big guy down at the bottom. He's finally getting up, and I'll tell you who it was. It was win number nine. Looks like... Uh, New Heisel's going to go for the field goal in, into the wind. Well, that's a long one. That wind is really howling. But the office building where the coaches yeah. have their offices may shield part of it. Good point. And they practice here on this field. This is their home field, obviously, and they know the winds. Oscarichian has hit one from 30 and hit one from 46. Got to get going. He only got six seconds. Two. One. Yeah. Hello, let it go. No. The stat came with a zero on the 
the play clock. That's a big three points because it puts him up by eight. Big kick. I think the crowd was willing the clock to slow down. <laughs> no, no. That ball cleared the uprights. And I don't know, Keith, you mentioned that that building may block that win. It may, it may, it may. I mean, yep. it's, he, it. I mean, it's a strong win. He's kicking it to you. But it's good. The question was whether or not the snap would come before the play clock of 25 seconds expired and the snap came, I mean, just the hair before the zero. Kick snapper is Brian Stoltenberg, the regular center. You know who else is on the staff that will jog some memories around Big Eight country is Ben Gregory with a pretty good running back. Oh, yes. <laughs> Brian Cabral played right here. Kind of right there. John Embry. Fred Von Oppen's come over. He was at Stanford and in the pros. Chuck Peter played at Michigan. Bob Hawk, the special teams coach. What a good staff. It's McElroy at the four. Let's see if he can get a little help. After the 30 and then driven back on a hard tackle by Hannibal Navies. Let's go back to that field goal. Take a look right over here. That's the that's the second clock, okay? The uh, you get the ball snapped. Let's watch that. It goes to zero, and the ball is snapped after it goes to zero. Oh, it was just yeah, simultaneous. It was, yeah, it was. Mm. You know, the back judge is in charge of the delay of game. He could not have been looking at the 25 second clock and the snap at the same time. McElroy is out of the game because he took a wallop on that return, just uh, laid him right on his back, and it might have deflated him just a little bit. So you figure he's going to come back pretty quickly because he trotted it off. But uh, DeAndre Hardiman is in there at the tailback position right now. Uh, we, they're not going to put that 18-year-old freshman in there. You can see that Leland has taken a pretty good pounding all day. Hardiman is a freshman, too, but he's 225-pounder, and he's a little older. Leland has only started. This is his third start, and I'm sure this is the toughest defense that he's been up against. Second down and eight for the Aggies with six and a half minutes to play. Pulling's pass is good to Connell for a first down. Without a move the ball to the 41-yard line. And it's Pulling's game now. I mean, even if uh, Leland comes back in, Pulling is a guy, Pulling is a guy that has to bring him back. Oscar Richian hitting that 41-yard field goal a moment ago. He won his 13th straight outside of 40 yards. So he's he's a good kicker, no question. This is Hardiman, the big freshman tailback, and he's going to run for eight yards on that carry near midfield. as soft as a glass of buttermilk and he just dropped it. Whew. I never drank buttermilk but I guess it's soft. My partner looks at so. It. It's tipped and then there's nothing on it. All you gotta do is catch it. Yep. Now you gotta react. They were going one way. Oh Wilkins, you gotta get that ball. Sir, easy. You gotta catch that one. Roy finally talks his way back into the game. Third down, the Aggers are two out of 11. They give it to Leland, and there's nothing there. Third down, and a long two, and he got about half of it. The middle of the Colorado defense is holding up late in the game with 5.20 to play. Then Swan just tells us that uh, McElroy had his bell rung a little bit, but he's back in the ball game, so we assume he's all right. Do so you go for it here? You got five minutes. You got five minutes left in the game. They're going. Now they're going to call a timeout. It's their last timeout. Yes. They have 
no more times out remaining at 4.55 to play in the game and looking at fourth and two. Yep. Yep. Oh, I guess so. I don't know. No, no, no. Well, well, uh, yeah, that caused the second timeout. The first, the first timeout was caused by the fact that they were going for two points. And it wasn't ready for that. And then when they came back, That zero you see there is critical. And it was caused by uh, Colorado being in a position to go for two. And they come out with a funny looking alignment. And that caused another one. And all of it happened early in the fourth quarter. And then used two timeouts around the fact that New Heiso was going for two points. First they were surprised that he was going for two. And then the formation and he came out and caused them to take the second. So they're out of timeout. Fourth and a short two. Pass. No. Well, they missed it. That's not the ball game, though. Nope. That's not the game. But they're causing AM to play left-handed. Pulling is hobbling. I don't know. It looks like an ankle. It's really bothering him. I like the call. The little rollout action. Runner pass option, but. It's a poor throw and not a very good effort. I guess it's just too far outside. But... All right, Colorado ball with Trotman back in there as the single back. It's just across midfield where it's first down. And Trotman finds some room in the middle and picks up about five. Stoltenberg 64 with a pancake. Of number 28, driver. Well, early on, we talked about offense number four in the nation versus number four defense. 29 points, a lot of yardage. And stop McElroy, they've done that. Only 149 yards, so Colorado's got it their way. But four minutes, the thing AM needs to do is attack. They got to start blitzing and cause fumbles right here on this series. Yeah, they've only got a four-man front there. Yeah, and yeah. they seem to have backed off. Trotman's going to pick up a couple of more yards on second down and a long four. But uh, instead of just selling out and going after him, and now's the time when you would see, think that they, they, they got it. their first touchdown of the ball game with their defense when they knocked the ball loose, and they were blitzing. Now they've, they've seemed to they come out of that blitzing, and they're not doing it. That's when you disrupt thing and, and make the timing of the handoff of the quarterback knock it out of his hand. All right, it's third and two. We've got Baruch, Wyde, Anderson, Wyde. Give it a trap, one. He's close. I don't think he's quite there. No, Colorado's going to be looking at fourth and short. You got to kick it down there and let them uh, make them go as long as far as you can, don't you? Depends on how far it is. That's a good yard. Ah, uh, let's see. I, you know, I got to kick it. You got to <laughs> kick it. I got to kick it too. Your defense has been playing well. You got McElroy under under wraps. I back them up. Back them up. They got no way to stop the clock. They're going to let the clock run down here, then they're going to... Yeah, they're just they're spending, they're spending seconds here. Then they're going to kick it. Let the clock run down. Take, Why not take the five yards? What difference well, does that, this tells me they're going for it. If they take a timeout, it tells me they're going for it, and they're not going to punt it. Because why take a timeout and then punt it? Yeah, you're right. But, 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 but. Timeout gives them some time to talk about it, too. You know, New Heights has done a great job, Keith. Uh, a, while, a while back, they lost, Colorado lost four coaches from last year's team, including the head coach 
Bill McCartney, their offensive and defensive coordinators. They lost 10 players to the NFL. Seven players of those 10 were drafted in the first three rounds. New Heisel comes in, the second youngest coach, and, and all he does is win his first three and, and is about to beat the number three ranked team in the country. But he's lost the starting quarterback. That's, well, next week that's, at Oklahoma. That's, that's critical. That's Roy Depp-Hurk. He's just joining us. A knee injury earlier in the ball game. We got uh, conflicting reports, but uh, we got a report that it was a, maybe a partially torn ACL. He's out and on. Has a, has a, uh, a mobile cast on his leg. He's moving around. But uh, they're going to have to adjust without him because he was special. And m didn't have a tough schedule. This was the one game they needed to maybe go undefeated all year. It's fourth and one. They're going. Quarterback dives following Stoltenberg, Heath, Irwin, and Chris Nioli. And it appears he's got it. He does. Fourth inning. That was a gamble. Yes. And, and I'm sure. Take a look. 64 is Stoltenberg. 63 is Irwin. That's nine as Wynn, the linebacker. They're running right at him. You know, Keith, early in the game, AM defensive line was winning that battle. Now, late in the game, it's Colorado people that are winning the line of scrimmage. And two, 15 and counting. First down, Colorado at the Aggie 39. This is my favorite formation here. He'll kneel down. Put it down and start the clock. Texas A&M does not have a timeout, and we're off to New York from Johnson. Yeah. time Texas A&M beat the top 10 team on the road was a while ago 16 years ago to beat Penn State in State College 1979 here's the Buffalo schedule and uh, this has a lot of meaning particularly next week when they play at Norman and they have Kansas here Nebraska will be here on the 28th of October and that's tough Tough stop next week with a new quarterback. That is a tough stop, and, it, and were it not for the injury to Detmer, you would think that maybe New Heisel's got this team going where they can run the run the schedule. But uh, he's a special player, and I, I don't know if he can adjust that quickly to a new quarterback. Penalty flags. Because Hessler will be nervous next week, a lot more so than this. <laughs> Aggies are going to see it one more time. You're going to have to punt it. Yeah. Offside on the defense. Five yards the That's one way to, uh, after Colorado's backing up, that's one way for A&M to stop the clock. As you look at A&M, uh, see the uh, Southwest Conference schedule, they go into Texas Tech, SMU, Baylor, Houston, Middle Tennessee State comes in, and then the big game uh, at the end of the year, against their arch rival Texas. It's third down and nine. And they're not going to give them the ball. That's enough. That's it. So they won't get it back. They were able to run it out, even though the Aggies jumped offside trying to kill the clock and save it. And we're headed for the final score as Colorado upsets Texas A&M 29-21 in Boulder. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Ray Mickens with eight tackles and a block field goal and John Hessler from Colorado who was 10 of 20, 177 and a passing touchdown and ran for two in relief of the injured Coy Detmer. In celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund 
We reward outstanding students for academic achievements and help those in financial need. Don't forget ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, San Francisco at Detroit, Monday night at 9 Eastern here on ABC Sports.